Welcome to our channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab and along with my husband Chris, we do thrift flips. We take unwanted, unloved, outdated thrift store finds and then we give them new life. And on our channel, we share the process with you all. So when I am out thrifting and I am looking at furniture, when it's not just a regular piece of furniture and I know I want Chris to transform it into something else, I always ask him first because I am not the furniture flipper, but when I ran across this beautiful entertainment center, I automatically reminded of all those Pinterest posts where I see people flipping entertainment centers and making them into coffee bars. So of course I needed to ask him, it's not just a paint job and a fix job, it's a transformation. So the first thing that he's doing is removing the doors. Part of these opened concept coffee bars is there are no cabinet doors needed. So that would be another project piece. It's nice to buy a piece and be able to use other pieces and parts to make other projects. And then apparently whatever TV was in this cabinet, it was a little bit too big. So they definitely, not only did it, they have to cut out the back, which is usually the opening for it, but they had to cut away some of the trim also. So then also he's going to be removing this piece of metal though it was a nice feature on the entertainment center it is not going back on the coffee bar and then he's going to be removing that shelf there's a lot of space still there so we want to utilize a little bit more that's just a little bit more wasted space than we would like and then since that metal piece was framed in with this beautiful framing he's going to go ahead and remove that framing also You can really notice here how much space is wasted, which worked for an entertainment center, but Chris's idea is to put a light in there, so that would bring the light down too far to a coffee pot. So just taking all that extra trim off, cutting off this extra shelf, just open that up, and this will just be a beautiful open cabinet. So I will say this poor cabinet did get a little bit of used and abused while it was being taken apart. So there's lots of spackling, lots of holes that need to be filled. So Chris is going to be going in with some Durham water putty and getting all that done. But the, yeah, look at all these pieces and parts of this entertainment center. And then after that Durham water putty is dry, which actually he let sit overnight, he's going to be sanding it all nice and smooth. So he's going to have to be needing to change out the hardware on these drawers. So he needed to fill those holes and also one of the original pieces was missing. So to be able to hide the hardware of the light fixture in this cabinet, Though I know there was a space there that he could have hung it from, but it, it was too much of a space. It would have hung down way too low. So what he's doing now is he needs to make another little cubby to hide that hardware. There's really not a lot of space needed to hide the electrical for this light. So as you see, it's just going to go about down about this far, just perfect to hang that light from. So now on this piece, he needs to cut out where the light fixture would be mounted. And once he gets to the center point, just tracing around that electrical box. And he'll just go in with his drill and make a nice size hole that he can fit his jigsaw in to cut that shape. Now after getting all the electrical wiring ran, he can now start to attach that board where the light will be hanging from. So we were actually blessed that a friend had done a project of her own and had a leftover piece of beadboard that fit perfectly on the back of this cabinet. And then another blessing that is my brother had some leftover trim from a remodel job that he had done to his own house. So perfect to be able to trim the inside of this. So I definitely love how this is just coming together, opening up that space. I know it's hard to see that beadboard right now, but boy, will it pop once it's painted. And if you notice, he did actually add an outlet to it with a switch. So now time to get this piece all cleaned up using some crud cutter. Just wipe on, wipe off, and get any grime, any 
anything that will prevent your paint from sticking. Now he's just going to go in and paint all the detailed edges, all those edges where he knows that he's going to distress with this black onyx ready to use paint right off the shelf from Walmart. He's actually going to be using the sprayer on this piece so he had a little bit of prep work covering up those outlets then wrapping those drawers in some plastic this is just a roll of random plastic i think they're trash bags that i thrifted for 609 and that was way before we even had this nice of a sprayer but boy was it a great foresight to buy it so I can't tell you how much we love this Graco sprayer. Oh my goodness. Took a little bit used to get, you know, using it and getting used to how the spray comes out, buying a little bit different of a tip to be able to control it. But wow, just is a nice, smooth paint job. When it comes to this Kills paint and primer and then spraying it, we, he does go in and do two coats. It's just enough that it covers with that first coat, but there might be a little bit of blotchiness that just didn't get covered. So going in with that second coat for us is a needed thing. Now a sprayer sure does make it handy when it comes to little cubby areas like this. And I know we could have taken them off, but that's like nice extra storage. Now it's definitely well worth the time of wrapping these, prepping these properly before spraying. That way these drawers stay nice and clean. Now after getting this all sprayed with the second coat, that beadboard was just a very raw wood. Chris felt the need to go back in and give it one more coat just by using a brush. Now that this cabinet is all painted up, you can really see that pop of that beadboard. You can't even tell where that original top was where that metal piece was is just really all has come together so now he's going to go in and use some 220 sandpaper and start giving little distressing to the edges and then smoothing the entire piece out making even though that sprayer does a nice a smooth job just in case there's any bumpiness any texture to it just making it nice and smooth and then to pop all these details just pushing on that sandpaper to reveal some of that black that he put in originally when it comes to distressing a piece of furniture it is all personal taste you can leave it as is but since this is a white piece and there's all these little details just going along those sharp edges just showing some of that black through just shows off details that you don't see when it's all painted the same color. So for one more level of protection, Chris is going in with some Verithane finishing wax and just ripening down the entire piece. This is a wax on, you know, wipe on and wipe off any excess and then let it dry. It just leaves this paint job just feeling nice and smooth. So a little did Chris know that he was going to get to use his new tool. Somebody here locally has started buying pallets full of stuff and then is having a warehouse sale. So Chris wanted to stop by mostly tools or bathroom supplies like cabinets and sinks and showers. But this was one of the tools. Little did he know that it would come in handy this quick. So this is a tool that helps you guide where you need to drill your holes for the piece of hardware that you're putting in. And then in our hoard of hardware, these were some original drawer poles that I had bought for another piece of furniture, but when they came, I did not like them, and I had actually purchased them off Amazon, so I'm happy to get to use these. I really think that these poles really accent these drawers nicely. So now Chris is going to be installing the light, and I bought we bought these off of Amazon. It was actually a two-pack. For $22, very cost efficient, and I just absolutely love the look. But the thing I didn't like is, look at that. Why would you send a silver screw with a black piece? But uh, yes, we can paint it. So luckily, this Waverly chalk and ink matches up perfect. A little bit of Q-tip, a little bit of dabbing on that screw, and now you don't have to look at it. 
Oh, I do just love how he put the light in here. I love that we were blessed to have that piece of beadboard. I love all the detailing on this beautiful cabinet. So I thank you so much for watching today's video and what did you think of this furniture flip? Was it something you would have stayed away or did we inspire you or help you out in any way? So I thank you again so much for watching today's video and if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new to our channel and checking us out for the first time, please consider hitting that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know when we've uploaded a new video.